to uh, say uh, thank you uh, to Pavel, to Andre, to all uh, of you uh, who makes uh, my uh, being here uh, possible. Uh, I don't know, uh, I, I'm very surprised uh, that Pavel uh, has uh, some notion uh, from my um, uh, last year uh, presentation because uh, it was in Ukrainian and uh, I don't know what you understand. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have okay. translations. <laughs> uh, but today I uh, uh, a little bit uh, leveled up and uh, prepare my um, uh, presentation, no, my presentation speech uh, in English. Uh, my English is not uh, fluent, uh, so uh, please forgive me. I uh, will uh, read it uh, maybe. Not often uh, look at your eyes, but I will try. So, uh, I'd like uh, to uh, talk with you today uh, about uh, um, uh, with correspondence of a theme of our last year conference about conspiracy theory, and I uh, have speech about uh, conspiracy theory last year. So uh, today I uh, would like to develop uh, this topic and uh, to uh, talk about uh, Putin uh, doppelganger's myth. Uh, so I'm starting reading my uh, speech. Uh, so uh, I want uh, to talk about Putin's uh, doppelganger's doppelganger, uh, uh, because this is a classic a conspiracy theory as I see it. And uh, it became viral, uh, viral in Ukraine during the war. This theory can tell us uh, more about how Putin's regime is organized. Uh, this regime, uh, as you know, unleashed a bloody uh, indicious war in Ukraine. And also uh, it could tell uh, us more about how Ukrainians are dealing psychologically with their exist existential treats. Sorry for my English. Um, first, I need uh, to make one uh, important uh, disclaimer. Uh, we are cur curious to know if Putin is using double bodies for real. We don't know. Uh, this um, uh, this is likely, uh, as the world uh, has already seen examples uh, of intelligence services and or leaders using using double bodies for security or other reasons. Uh, but uh, whether the myth of Putin's doppelgangers uh, is true, this myth functions uh, in the mass consciousness as a conspiracy theory. Uh, just as in a psychic space, uh, fantasy and facts exist on an equal footing because they share a common neural basis, in the media, fact and fictions are similar subjects for informational ex information ex exchange. And uh, Putin uh, doubles exist as a conspiracy theory, and in such case, they are real and do exist. Uh, so let put, uh, let's put some context uh, in place. Uh, Putin's doubles were discussed from the beginning of his uh, presidential career uh, when uh, the world asked it, who is Mr. Putin. It was a conscious uh, and unconscious public reaction to Putin's unpenetrable personality, which he showed us. Uh, during the Russian president's uh, press conference in December uh, 2001, a long time ago, uh, when these press conferences were uh, in live, form live format yet, uh, one woman either asked or suggested that, put that Putin uh, get himself uh, a double to make it easier for him to keep up with uh, all the meetings he had to hold as president. Uh, Putin got off with one of his trademark jokes, but the bell rang. Russian voters were ready to be mystified by their own government. Moreover, they wanted it. My accent is on. <laughs> <laughs> For decades, uh, I feel like uh, um, a personage of uh, American film with uh, an actor who uh, act uh, Russian speaking. Uh, so terrible accent. 
Sorry. Uh, for decades, uh, the topic of Putin's doubles uh, has surfaced occasionally, but remain, remained uh, on uh, the periphery, on the media. Uh, the Kremlin may, made no bold efforts to disavow these rumors. In 2020, during the interview with Andrei Vandenko, and uh, uh, no more live formats, uh, formats ever, it was not live format, uh, Putin admitted uh, he had uh, um, Putin admitted uh, that he and his attendant uh, had once considered using doubles because of the risks of terrorist attacks, but uh, it was uh, this idea was abandoned. Uh, the full-scale uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russian army breathed a new life into the legends uh, legend of Putin's doppelganger. Headline, uh, headlines such as Ukraine, Ukraine push, pushes Putin double theory, uh, these headlines yeah, I take from the Newsweek, uh, and uh, I, I met uh, another similar headlines, uh, began to appear uh, in the global media. From being a periphery uh, conspiracy theory, Putin's doping uh, doping uh, doubles, I think, I, I will say doubles, have become mainstream, at least for Ukrainian media and media circles loyal to Ukraine. Since the summer of uh, 2022, uh, the head of Ukrainian intelligence, Krylo Bodanov, has spoken directly about Putin's use of doubles. And here is the culmination of this story. On January 19, uh, this year, uh, speaking at conference on, in Davos, Vladimir Zelensky, our president, said about possible negotiations with Putin, uh, uh, I quote, Today I don't quite understand whom to talk and what to talk about. I am not sure that the Russian president, who sometimes appears on Hermake, is alive. Or is he making a decision or is someone else making them? Uh, the end of quotation. Is in this way, the Ukrainian president verified Putin's doubles as fact, uh, at least for the media coverage of this war. So, uh, now we see, first, that Putin not very concerned that he had been speculated for years about using doubles, even more so. He or his attendants deliberately, but implicitly, this is the signature style, make people think that they would never be able to understand all the plans and actions of the leader, and that the leader himself was unknowable as divinity. Secondly, uh, on the other side of this war, in Ukraine, the topic of Putin's doubles has become uh, massively popular. popular. Millions of people find some uh, solace in the assumption that the bloody dictator, dictator uses doubles to perform. That is why uh, Putin doubles are not. Uh, that is why uh, Putin doubles theory is not just a widespread media phenomenon. It is a symptom of what is happening to people's mind due to the war, and what was happening to the aggressors' minds. Symptoms are something that psychology can deal with. And uh, now let's look at Putin doubles theory as a symptom of uh, the minds of people traumatized, traumatized by war. Uh, this myth has all the marks of conspiracy theory. Uh, because uh, uh, with this myth, uh, my one can see the secret intentions or of uh, an omnipotent person or group of persons. Then one can be excited about uncovering a conspiracy. Uh, this theory promises an endless search for evidence from photos and videos. Adept, uh, adepts of uh, Putin's double theory have the truth court. Uh, for example, Putin's earlobes differ in different photos. The, the theory uh, has existed for a long time and reproduced uh, itself uh, in different political contexts. 
it is based and find why it is conspiracy theory because it is based on questions that have no answer uh, such as is it uh, because it is uh, impossible to prove that that something or someone does not exist it is like proving of not uh, non-existence of god uh, the belief that it is not uh, the real Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin who appears in public uh, could bring us one uh, to three possible conclusions, uh, such as uh, the real Putin is not no longer alive. This theory has been in circulation uh, since about uh, 2008, long time ago. Uh, or, the real Putin is seriously ill and unable to fulfill his duties. It is relatively recent interpretation and quite popular. And Putin is panicked about an assassination attempt and is simply paranoid. It is the most obvious, obvious explanation consistent with common sense. Each of uh, these conclusions, as we see, uh, is comforting and reassuring for people waiting for the wo war to end. The Putin uh, doubles uh, conspiracy theory is uh, capturing uh, the mind of more and more people in Ukraine and beyond. And uh, based on this example, we can reconstruct the psychological benefits of conspiracy theories per se. We can understand intellectually and experience uh, firsthand the powerful appeal of believing in conspiracy theories. First, believing in Putin doubles is like making a dream, uh, making a dream come true, according to Freudian insights. Cherished desires are realized in a literal way. Today, millions uh, wish the Russian uh, president to stop his existence because the Russian-Ukrainian war is perceived uh, primarily as Putin's wars, war. Also, believing in doubles is a fascinating game of looking for evidence and proofs of a fake Putin. It's an amazing game. Uh, we all like to play it. Uh, people can spend much time looking at, info, at photos and, or videos finding dissimilarities between different versions of Putin. In this way, uh, they or we, uh, maybe we, uh, regain power and control over what is happening. Next, believing in doubles uh, is an opportunity to escape from the horrific reality of war into a fantasy world of omnipotent intelligence services, something like the James Bond series, where agents use top secret technology and perform complex stunts. And finally, the belief uh, in doubles symbolize uh, the dictator's uh, assassinations, assassination by ridiculing his paranoia, his extreme security measures, and his repeatedly plastic surgery and altered appearance. A dictator who is afraid cannot be scary. The conspiracy theory about Putin's doubles as a psychological or media phenomenon has more influence on the war, I, I think so, uh, uh, has more influence on the war experience than the probability of the Russian president uh, using uh, doubles in sure. It is part of how Ukrainians perceive the war and cope with it. First and foremost, we intend to satirize and downplay threats and delight in assessing possible prospects for ending the war. It's our feature, not back. Uh, about uh, 19, uh, 9 and 0% percent, uh, percent of Ukrainians believe in future complete, complete victory over Putin's army. Also, the war's end has yet to be inside, but we believe it very strong. Conspiracy theories are synonymous with a distorted perception of reality, which is its main danger. But at the same time, conspiracy theories can be a very effective coping strategy. It is, it is its main psychological task. 
the example of Putin double theory shows how much pain and horror people put in the, into their beliefs, even if uh, these beliefs look strange. There is always a bitter truth behind them. And this is an essential, essential, essential well, lesson about conspiracy theories that we must learn from this war. I will never laugh about conspiracy theories and never more. And uh, now, le now, let's look at the theory of the doubles from Putin's perspective. He mystified uh, Russian society and the world's elite for 20 years in a row and in his uh, 23rd year in office unleashed a major war in Europe. Everyone knows uh, Vladimir Putin worked in the secret service and headed it uh, for some time. In the status of acting president of the Russian Federation in uh, 1999, it's a long time ago, Putin joked, and I quote, a group of FSB officers sent to work undercover in the government copes with their tasks at the first stage. It was a joke. Uh, subsequently, we could see that all of Putin's political activities are cover work. Putin jealousy pro protects his personal life from outside observers. It's not just about his entirely personal family circumstances. It's about his genuine personality, hidden in the games of the master manipulator that Putin successfully plays with the international community. He forces his partners to look into his eyes in search of his soul, to endlessly solve the puzzle of who Mr. Putin is, and to ask themselves how serious he is when he threatens the world with a nuclear weapon. At the same time, Putin seems to be watching, it's my uh, fantasy, uh, seem, Putin seems to be watching that what is happening from around the corner snooping on other people and other leaders, uh, turned uh, turn by doubts, making mistakes and looking helpless, and he enjoys, enjoys it. In this sense, the myth of Putin doubles is a gift to Putin himself. He throws another deception in the media to show off someone's na naivety and weakness. But this metal has two sides. If Putin has many faces that he presents to the world, does he have the honest one? Is there room for natural body when duplicate bodies populate the political space? When a person lives a, under, an under, undercover life, does he have anything left of real life? Putin's cover operation as head of the Russian state, uh, of the Russian state has reached uh, such a scale uh, that he is forced uh, that he is forced forced to hide the real uh, him from himself. I think so. In this regard, uh, does the real Putin exist? Is natural. From a psych psychological point of view, Putin does not exist. Putin's personalistic regime became a specific kind of dictatorship. Everyone understands that Putin has all the power in, Ira in Russia. But for 23 years, the real Putin has never come to the forefront of politic politics because he did not have such a goal. Putin is a pioneer in what can uh, be called fake power. The power of entity that escape, uh, escapes from relations with society is present in these relations as fake body and yet has complete control over society. Fake power compromises the idea of personal polit political responsibility. Putin does not, does not exist in power as a person. On the contrary, he seeks to hide himself, to remove the real him from the power relation. What's why uh, he is extrem extremely, extremely dangerous? Putin mystifies the international community, his people, the elite, elites, and himself. 
everyone need clarification as to which Putin is the real one. What are the signs hidden in the shape of his earlobes that one can use to recognize him? How can all of this uh, how can all of this affect the situation with, with, when someone who looks like Putin orders the notorious red button to be pressed? It takes two to make a fraud happen. One who wants to deceive and one willing to be deceived. It was not only Russian society that willingly bought Putin's hoax for years. The same thing happened in other cultures with national and global elites. At the end of this war, the world uh, will have to reconsider not only political institutions or security structures, strengthening the, the resilience to modern hybrid threats and mutations of political tyranny. We have to change something in, more, in the more new age, nuanced settings. The psychological mechanism that make us vulnerable to dangerous political hoaxes. We must learn to distinguish between the real and the fake, between copies and duplicates. In the long run, we must reconsider our understanding of power as a specific form of society, societal relations. We must ask the, ourselves what exactly we want from these relations and uh, what they should be like to create meaningful order in our lives instead of the house or of uncertainty and lies. That's all from me. Thank you for your attention very much. Thanks, Ms. Matlana. I, I think, think it's, it's also a very, very interesting, interesting issue, issue for theater makers and, and, and people of the theater. theater. This is the story, story about the double, because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, know one, one of the core, core <laughs> uh, notions uh, in, in the theater, theater as well. As well. So, 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 Also, also from, from, from this, this uh, side, yeah. uh, I, I think it's maybe, maybe it's better, better to continue with, with, with the lectures, lectures and, and in, in case of any questions, questions we will we continue uh, after all, uh, all uh, uh, of your lectures. Uh, so now, you you go 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 Yes, yes, and Yana will, uh, will uh, translate consecutively uh, uh, to Polish, and then <laughs> our translators will, will uh, translate into your headphones. So. Fake Vlad, fake держава уже готує тінейджерів Путіних і глибоких пенсіонерів. Тому ми повинні розуміти, що багато прийдеться зібрати Путіних для для арешту. Найперше хотів би за ним зачнути свою виповідь і долучити ще до like to join a loop of uh, by saying a joke his army starts to accept the teenagers and uh, senior population to act against ukraine so we have to 
be very strong, we have to be strong, great army, to maintain our strong position. I wanted to point out that Putin is not a problem as such, as a person. The problem is the whole society supporting totalitarian regime. Indian life, let me uh, share a joke. An 80 year old grandmother has been waiting for a braid and she's looking for her cell phone. So she's looking for a cell phone. Let me explain this joke. The raid and the siren, as the, the, um, the sound of the siren of the raid is so strong that this is the only way that she is able to find her cell phone, mobile phone. And that was the Ukrainian joke. On the one hand side, Ukraine was ready for the war before we experienced pandemic and the whole education system uh, went online. I'm a lecturer and uh, I give my lecture. Uh, I lecture online still. Even the doctors, they make consultations uh, in the online mode. You probably would like to ask the following question, why today I want to talk about uh, uh, totalitarianism. As I mentioned already, it's not only about a single person of Putin, it's about the whole society. The Russians keep the real uh, arms in their hands. They use these arms to kill the uh, economy, the culture of their country and the other countries, countries as well. That's why totalitarianism is the pathological, psychological, psycho psychosocial pathology that requires special treatment.
First, I would like to show you some images. I will show you the pictures that I saw when I first uh, came to Poland for a conference. This is an example of the proper reaction response uh, of the uh, advertisement commercials uh, uh, responding to the question of war. This was the way that uh, the, the uh, business people, the country, and the people, the society, supports their uh, position and their uh, attitude towards the war. Now I would like to say a few words about uh, the Russian society, what they did before the um, mobilization was introduced. In the beginning, there were individuals, single individuals uh, coming out with the posters saying we are against the war, no war. A uh, majority of people joined these initiatives. They didn't have any posters in hands, but they were raising their hands and standing this way, um, making this pose, thinking and hoping that uh, uh, the war would come to an end without any consequences. Unfortunately, these people got arrested. Totalitarianism doesn't exist per se. There are many indicators, social, emotional, psychological symptoms of totalitarianism that I would like to talk about. I would like to focus my attention on the goal of this presentation. We want to identify psychological foundations, pillars that totalitarianism is based on, the foundations of totalitarian regimes and terrorism. I assume that this will be needed for us once the Russian peace and order goes away. We will be facing so-called ill society that will need to be activi activated. Let us now try to explain the basic politological terms in psychological dimensions. Uh, 
взаємоспіль зв'язок, що для чого а, в цих цих визначеннях існує, і спробувати показати, чи відповідає таке теоретичне уявлення взаємозв'язків а, тому, що фактично відбувається на психологічному рівні. Тобто, грубо кажучи, ми зараз дивимося на а, ландшафт а, океану, але потім на поверхню океану, да, а потім ми спробуємо це звернути у підводний мир, світ. Let us try to look at the terms and the links between them from theoretical perspective. What does it, the so-called iceberg, look like in reality? We only see the tip of it, but there's the whole bottom that we don't see. lies, pseudo-ethics, scaring people, cruelty, are the so-called components of totalitarian regime. That's what we are talking about, that's what we are analyzing. What is the idea based of on a common goal? This is the overarching idea of coming together, acting collectively in the spirit of collective narcissism and on unification. Totalitarianism is actually not only a problem that uh, concerns Ukraine now, now. First and foremost, it is a hit, a blow against one's own nation and subjectivity of the nation. Let us now look at the models that we can see from the politological perspective and psychological perspective. Let us look at it in the context of reality. The study was uh, carried out in order to be some food for thought so that we can talk about it uh, on a broader forum and to a greater in a greater detail. Uh, 
всі ці значення кореляції, негативні і позитивні, які нам дають якісь психологічні наукові зміни. We see here the correlations, symbols, images that can lead to positive and negative consequences. The author of the images is Luba. She's the drawer. She's the drawing type. There are four factors that determine the totalitarianism, that's double thinking, conspirology, and we hate opposition, and so-called collective narcissism. Conspirology makes us perceive the reality through the prism of uh, conspiracies that taints the reality. As you can see, there are four counterfactors, counterindicators that you can juxtapose with the four elements that I've spoken before. So double thinking uh, goes against cognitive activity. There is on-task personal orientation, media literacy, and democracy support. They act in the opposite direction than the four elements presented before. As I mentioned, there are four psychological phenomena. They are interlinked and intertwined and um, correlated to the support of democracy. Two are aimed at a distorting cognition, that's double thinking, and false reality being the topic of Orwell's 1984. What is linked to it is the conspirological consciousness over subjective ideation of a supra entity that modifies our subjectivity to are used to distort social emotions that's collective narcissism so-called self ideation and superiority complex the second one is the envy hate correlation what is it? It's the willingness to destroy all those who are better than you are. How to counteract it? How to fight those totalitarian mechanisms? Well, you can find it for a certain level of activi activity, aiming at 
cohesive and coherent support. You can fight it through being target-oriented, goal-oriented, oriented towards solving the problems and not, not um, self-ideation and generating good relations with others. Media literacy is another tool to fight false reality. We also need a confirmation. of so-called rules between rules and, and principles that link those phenomena. The study leads us to development. Let me touch upon three elements of that. First of all, we plan to seek and analyze so-called indicators of people who do not succumb to fascism and totalitarianism. The second element is to act in a targeted manner in order to leave the face of post-totalitarianism. And thirdly, we want to carry out uh, research and look for tasks. for the development of the society and the nation. Now, let me share some practical topics with you. Something that can refer to education can also refer to culture. All this service, all this research, indicate that we can ask, act in more productive way. We can be more humanitarian, we can be more social. And that's why we can have a fresh look at uh, whatever we need or what the science already has for time being. What else do we need to be able to solve these problems through science? 
включитися в цю роботу на наступній конференції, яка зараз складена. І якщо є бажання або в жанрі екстремального туризму, або в жанрі присутності в онлайн, ми запрошуємо для зустрічі. This will, there will be a possibility to discuss these topics during the next conference, upcoming conference that uh, will take uh, place uh, on the 25th of April 2023. It's possible to participate online. Of course, we would like to invite all of you um, in person as well. During the conference, we are going to discuss the topic of intensification of the uh, mental activity and uh, creative activity. We will also talk together how can we communicate uh, uh, on the level one-to-one -one between humans and the bigger group of uh, um, recipients. Thank you for attention. Bardzo dziękujemy. The last um, lecture, uh, Lubov Majdanova. Dzień dobry. Witam. I am media psychologist from Ukraine and uh, I want to talk about uh, media and uh, about informational space and about the psychological uh, aspects uh, of information war and uh, uh, psychological aspect of media, trauma and uh, about the reality about the genuine um, and uh, some instrument for support of reality. The war, uh, Russian-Ukrainian war, is not uh, the local war, but the battle of the system, of the totalitarian system, which continues uh, Soviet Union uh, ideology, ideology and uh, a new uh, democracy in Ukraine, uh, which is uh, pro-European uh, value, values and uh, spirit. And uh, this is uh, the battle of uh, different identities. Uh, this is a picture um, uh, appear in uh, 2017, uh, but uh, it is really very um, close uh, for the idea of this war. It is global context and it is battle of identity. Um, war is disruptive not only for reality, for material uh, part of our life, uh, which destroy our um, home, our buildings and cities, um, destroy the um, life of people, no, casual life, and uh, death of people and death of children. It is uh, disruptive for informational space at home because we have uh, transformation of the media and uh, transformation of information 
uh, under the propaganda and under the con counter propaganda. Because uh, mm, propaganda have a psychological targets uh, which uh, mm, directed uh, on the own people, Russian people, and uh, directed to other people, to Ukrainian people, and to Europe and global uh, humanity at home. Um, the psychological targets of this uh, propaganda is the, um, the creation of post-trust. You remember that post-trust is the words of uh, the Oxford uh, Dictionary in uh, 2016 year, if you remember it. Um, but it is the Russian propaganda um, instrument. Because uh, uh, if we compare the uh, definition of post-propaganda in Oxford Dictionary and definition of the uh, post-truth in uh, Russian uh, Wikipedia, for example, it is different. Uh, post-truth in uh, Oxford Dictionary is about the uh, viral um, dissemination of the uh, false, of the fake, of not real uh, um, message, quickly, more quickly uh, than real message. Because uh, uh, fake is constructed uh, uh, for emotional uh, per uh, perception. But uh, real uh, messages uh, uh, may be different, not only for emotional impact. Uh, but in Russia, uh, source of information, post trough is the epocha. Epocha is, this, is a, a um, time when the trough is not need. It is different. Uh, and because uh, it is uh, the uh, known, uh, fake known, we have not post draft we have draft And post draft is the uh, known for Russian propaganda. Uh, psychological targets of propaganda uh, may be list in five points. Moral, Intelligence at home as cognitive adequacy. Uh, exhaustion, when we have so many emotions, when we uh, go to distress. When we. Uh, tired and uh, uh, demobilization for, for any action. And uh, uh, four is cohesion. Uh, it is uh, commonly it is solidarity, and a human humanism as uh, at all, because war is dehumanization process. Uh, and because we mm, uh, conclude that uh, psychological targets of uh, uh, propaganda is covered of reality. And правдивость. Uh, it is the main uh, uh, target of uh, propaganda. Uh, counter propaganda. It is need during the war because we uh, cannot uh, win when we don't lie to enemy. But we cannot lie enemy with, uh, when we cannot lie to all people. <laughs> because counter propaganda uh, is uh, disruptive for information space and for, uh, for genuineness at all. Mm, the same. Uh, and uh, 
because uh, we must to use instrument, instruments for uh, support the reality, the trust reality, cover it in media. Uh, must have tools for checking fakes. Um, I'm sorry, maybe you know all this uh, um, instrument, <laughs> but I repeat, uh, it is uh, uh, the part of uh, media literacy in Ukraine just now for um, adults and for adolescents in school. Uh, we proposed, uh, we have the media literacy movement in Ukraine just now, uh, not only during the war, but before the war, uh, but it is need during the war the most. Um, this is uh, must have tools uh, for checking fakes and uh, find the original source, uh, which proposed, I'm sorry, uh, it is three, uh, but uh, it is a uh, um, technical uh, company, you know, international communication company, which proposed some tools for uh, fact checkers. And uh, we have uh, only, uh, we have not only the technological proposition, but the um, citizen, uh, but the uh, government and citizen uh, inst uh, created instruments. On the slide, you have you see the uh, legal uh, government uh, resource site of the National Secu Security Co uh, Council of Ukraine where uh, proposed the most reson resonance uh, uh, fakes and uh, uh, their um, discreditation and uh, real information for, for fake discreditation. It is uh, uh, one of the weak uh, periodic of this, but you can see what is uh, the most uh, uh, disruptive uh, fake for Ukraine on this side. And next, uh, uh, you can see two uh, public, uh, two uh, media NGOs uh, uh, resources. Stop fake and uh, detector media. It is the mostly famous in in Ukraine. Uh, they are uh, stop fake uh, was created in 2013 before the war, and detector media uh, was created in uh, 2016. But uh, they are uh, from Telekritika which uh, have a long history, uh, such resources uh, have a long history, but just now they have this info chronicle as a part of their site, which uh, have very, uh, they have, uh, they work as platform to interaction with the people. Uh, people ask them, is it true trust? Uh, is it information the trust? Uh, because they have very more, uh, very uh, big. Um, uh, frequency, very high frequency of uh, publication of the fake. And uh, detector media, it is uh, media watch uh, resource. Uh, they. Uh, um, give the analysis of the fake the most reasonable for society. For example, the last uh, um, publication of uh, Detector Media from yesterday is about the uh, uh, social informational phenomenon Redan. Uh, public, uh, as public uh, military company, but, is, uh, but it is the fake. Uh, 
in reality, uh, public military company Rodan is absent. It is fake. <laughs> but uh, huh? not, it does not exist. Mm. And uh, on the slide, you can see the mm, schema of uh, uh, using reality, uh, real needs, and uh, uh, real small sample, and uh, uh, transform uh, this into uh, media phenomenon uh, as a part of uh, informational war, of informational spe special operation, informational psychological, because it is very uh, emotional. It is about the uh, teenagers' battles and uh, deviance behavior in the center of the big city, in the uh, trade center, uh, where they come as flash mob and battle between. And uh, uh, it is in February when in Moscow was real battle between um, teenager and uh, two, um, uh, two adolescents was, uh, uh, was dead. And uh, after this, in Ukrainian a big city, Kiev, Lviv, Odessa, um, we have a, a flash mob, which is for uh, it is a real uh, need of uh, a teenager uh, to realize their emotion. Anger is very high emotion and sought for meaning and some curiosity. Uh, and uh, the battle for spravedlivost. Justice. Justice, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, this is uh, media phenomenon because the small uh, real events multiplication in the media as a big problem and added a private, uh, private uh, military company. Small discourse element which change the sense of this information. And uh, fake news, no, uh, you have uh, many uh, no, multi-languages, multi uh, stop fake news is multi-languages uh, resource, but in Ukraine uh, they, uh, in real time, but in English, for example, next week, no, about next week fakes. And uh, last part of my speech is about uh, media traumatization because uh, we need to give information about war, but uh, it is very emotional information and very impact on emotion. You know. And uh, we have uh, research about uh, impact uh, media to people, and the people, and uh, I want to show uh, this uh, result. Ups, 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 ups. Ты бачишь, нема этих стопчиков. My picture is uh, disrupted, but uh, the main sense was uh, that we ask people about their stressful experience in reality and by media consumption. When they uh, see, yeah, when they see the uh, information about uh, which covered some traumatized, tra traumatic situation, traumatic experience, uh, and people see it on the by the media, uh, by the media, and uh, the results show that. Uh, Less people say about real trauma, 
what more people say about the trauma from the media. And uh, it is uh, about real insecurity uh, of the war, near 28 persons, but these events uh, by media, more than 14 persons. And it is the problem because we must um, make the new balance in media, uh, which uh, from one side is about the reality, and from other side about we, we, we must thinking about the impact, about the traumatized uh, of this uh, uh, media messaging or media images. Uh, I show you some some images which uh, uh, people um, talk about as the most traumatic. It is image about the destroy of the home and about the children. Uh, during the war. Uh, I'm sorry for disruption <laughs> of this. Uh, this is uh, some of, the, of these images of the war which is uh, the most traumatic. Uh, but we cannot um, give the information. But we must think about the uh, balancing in media and uh, during the uh, during using this image, for example, in educational or some cultural uh, situation, because we cannot. Who is the people who uh, who sit uh, in in the auditorium just now? Uh, and uh, all image can be triggers for their post-traumatic uh, stress uh, symptoms and. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> about traumatic, uh, post-traumatic uh, uh, symptoms. This is uh, the result of our uh, uh, all Ukrainian uh, sample. Uh, 1,000 participants uh, in August uh, last year, where we ask about uh, this uh, feeling and uh, thinking and about the uh, state of people, uh, which uh, they, uh, no, during the last week. And we can see no, only the numbers. <laughs> it is the, the percent of people who answer often, I feel it often. It is uh, the um, uh, criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder in these uh, uh, points. And we see that uh, more than th uh, one third of uh, adults uh, are in very high level of the um, irritable, Oh, un angry, and it is uh, 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 you, you can connect it, it with uh, the adolescent's need as a, a basis for media manipulation, and uh, a problem with sleep, which is the problem with healthy, with health, uh, and uh, health is the problem of. Yeah, it is a uh, psychophysiological um, aspect of the stress and distress, uh, which uh, go to somatic problem. <laughs> and because uh, uh, we need to, to work with this reality, and culture, is, uh, and culture industry is the real the power uh, for proposed people to self-regulation, to catharsis, to some form of emotional uh, health, emotional uh, healing, uh, and uh, uh, talking about the trauma, about the emotion in a security situation. It is very important for uh, people in Ukraine, and I think not only in Ukraine, because uh, media traumatization is not only Ukrainian phenomenon. 
people have very high emotional level and somatization of this stress um, and uh, it is that they help uh, public health problem, problem um, as uh, uh, for, for population at whole <laughs> for human and uh, this is uh, the last slide of my, my speech uh, about media psychological tasks for cultural industry as we as media psychology see it uh, it is uh, need to uh, renew the informational space at home during war and it is uh, uh, not possible uh, in, uh, no, only as part of our uh, our activity, but after war, it is uh, the main task for education and for uh, cultural industry. Uh, we must um, to create anti fake anti fake skills. It is a mission. Not only the operation or some you know, s small events, but it is the mission and uh, citizen moving uh, as a way to healing the information space. And we must to support unionists anyway. It is the main idea of uh, our. Uh, results interpretation and uh, it is uh, the way to over to coping with me with uh, war trauma and it is uh, the um, battle opposite dehumanization thank you very much <laughs>
mm, some mistakes, for example, in uh, military uh, strategy or, or, or something, uh, action, uh, or problem in military situation for general public, it is uh, it increase uh, decrease the spirit of uh, the power, uh, decrease empowerment, and because uh, it um, um, it not uh, censura but self censura maybe it is uh, self regulation of the journalist and media production. Uh, don't talk about it just now, when the battle is uh, continuous. Uh, but uh, opposite talk about the heroism, about the uh, win, maybe small win or big win. Uh, and uh, it is uh, the um, transformation of the media space during the war. It is not uh, the trough at home. No, it is uh, maybe some lie, uh, in, in, uh, some imbalance. Yes, but after the war, we must to um, renew this situation. We must to tell about it for our public, but they know <laughs> just now <laughs> about it. But we must to tell and we must to excuse, say excuse me and to, and to do something new for um, accenting, for focusing on reality, uh, for, for, for trust, as a battle for trust maybe. It is uh, our psychological view of this problem. You know better <laughs> about it because it is your um, your activity, your job, uh, how it uh, will be made. But uh, that it will be made, we as psychologists say absolutely um, it is need. <coughs> <coughs> as a strategy and uh, 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 the strategy of media uh, activity of post-war media activity uh, must base on the psychological phenomena it is uh, the phenomena of um, uh, security of emotion which uh, as, uh, as membrana of the uh, people who are victims, for example, do not uh, tell about it when they are not ready. They are ready, we tell about it with them. Uh, in future, we must to create some uh, memor memor uh, memory practices mm, as a, a common grief about the, our victims from other but maybe it, it is not popular idea just now <laughs> because, no, because we are in the war. But uh, we know as psychologists, as after war, it is the task for community to make common grief practices about the, it, it is uh, known for Europe, for example, about uh, Second World War. Um, and it is uh, experience of uh, peace building after the local war, different local war, uh, which uh, psychologists um, was analyzed, have analyzed and uh, have uh, results of their research. And so, <laughs> thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.